Boom. All right, there you guys have it. The numbers don't lie. All right, off we go to get the lightning hooked up to the trailer to do a real mileage test pulling a load. Everybody's curious on how much the mileage drops when you're hauling. So let's go and you might as well ride in fashion. Awesome. Let's hook up that trailer to the lightning and uh, do some range testing. Got the trailer. Christian's hooking up the hitch that we borrowed from the ID4. Good thing you brought this. We we're about to not bring this. Yeah, you never know what you're going to need to haul. Two inch ball, and to make it even more fun, we're going to throw the Subaru up on it. So we probably have about 2,000 pounds with the trailer, and then the Subaru's got to weigh over 3,000 pounds. So probably got over 5,000 pounds. It's rated for 10,000 pounds, so obviously it could do more, but I don't know, we don't have something that weighs 10,000 pounds. So 5,000 pounds is what you get and we're gonna see how much it affects the mileage, what kind of a percent drop you get when you're towing. Uh, it's completely flat where we're going for dinner. We're gonna calculate, we're gonna reset the trip, see exactly how far we go. We wanna get to you guys that data for anybody curious about the lightning uh, stats. Uh, yeah. Maybe. All right, let's get the Subaru on it now. Okay, Christian's doing the final input of all the weights. Super cool how you can input trailer weight, uh, trailer length, it just asks for all the data so it can calculate a more accurate number and it already did a lot of that because when I looked at it, it was at 100 and, was it 115, 124 miles of range? It yeah. already dropped it 40 because it knows we now have a trailer. Cool, Okey all the braking stuff. This Pro Trailer Backup Assist, we will have to try this thing out. So we were averaging about 1.9 miles traveled per kilowatt hour used with 130 kilowatt hours, we get about 250 miles of range. And so hopefully we get about 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour would be losing like a third or 40% of our range. Mm. So we'll see what we come out to. Yeah, half would be 0.95 miles per kilowatt, and we're hoping to be above that. If it takes up twice as much energy pulling a 5,000 pound trailer, that would not be the best. So we're shooting for like a 40% reduction, like he said. So we will see the number, the proof is in the pudding. We are not gonna run air conditioning for anybody wondering. It's a beautiful day outside, don't need it. And that would take up some more energy. So just keep that in mind, it's 80 degrees. Okay, we're not 20 degrees, you know, burning up half of our battery pack just because of the temperature, okay? Sorry to interrupt guys, but before we can continue this video, I have a bit of a confession to make. If you guys watched part one of the lightning series, you would remember that unfortunately we got hit by a freak hailstorm one day while we were charging the car in remote Montana. Now at first glance, when we got back to the truck, we thought we were in the clear. We didn't see any body damage, so we continued on our trip until we washed the truck and that's when we realized that yes, unfortunately there was a lot of damage. So we didn't really show that in the video because we were so embarrassed. We felt terrible that this happened on our watch but unfortunately there was nothing we could have done. So to help recoup some of those hail damage repair costs, I'm excited to announce that this video has been sponsored by Keeps. If you didn't already know, two out of every three guys will experience some level of male pattern baldness by the age of 35. Keeps is here to help by offering a subscription service providing various clinically proven treatment options to combat hair loss. The treatment plans, which are personalized and doctor recommended, ship straight to your door. And best of all, they're affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. While I am lucky to have a full, nice head of hair now, things can change quick, and I'm not naive to the fact that most men will struggle with hair loss in their life. In fact, I personally have friends who are in their 20s, just like me, who are already starting to lose their hair. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just just take better care of the hair that you have, Keeps has you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash jrgarage or hit my special link in the description below. Once again, that is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash jrgarage. Thank you Keeps for supporting this channel, making videos like this possible, and for helping us pay a very large hail bill on the lightning. Back to the video. And there goes Trevin in the Lamborghini. We want to race round two at the next red light. 
No, just kidding. We would not do as well here with this thing on the back. But I don't think it would be very phased. Remember that? Remember how the Tesla Model X accelerated? It felt like nothing was on the back. Seriously. This I'm sure would be the same. We'll give it a little little gas at the next light, and you'll see it just. It'll haul the weight, no problem. And what else is crazy is how quiet it is. Remember the 6.0 diesel? Yeah, it could haul a ton of weight, but that engine is working it. This is like driving a Rolls Royce while pulling 5,000 pounds back there. Yes, this ride is still very comfortable. Gotta love it. I love the ride on this truck. 10 out of 10. And for the sake of this test, on this main highway road, we're going about 60, 65, which is maybe what somebody would do on a highway anyway. How's the regen? How's the regen feel? Feels great about the same or with it being pushed you don't get the same slowdown yeah plenty of regen feels like the same amount without a trailer very cool so that that helps with braking especially if your trailer doesn't have brakes you know the regen takes a lot of the effort a lot of the uh, impact off your actual brakes you know doing the hard work so haven't had to stop there quite yet but yeah 65 on the main highway and then in town there will be uh, a few lights but in general it's been mainly no stop and this go this is so already far. awesome so a quick best case scenario update we have not had to stop yet so if you know that you just need to go from one exit to another on a nice level flat highway, you might be able to pull 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour. That's what we were getting when we were doing like 75 on the highway with no trailer. So this is impressive. We just hit two because yeah. we just regen for this red light. That's crazy. It's literally the same. It so far has not changed anything. Of course, we need to put you know 20 more miles on it to really get the data to... A good to average, <laughs> but still. Yeah, this is looking good so far. Once we hit the red lights and the city driving, it's gonna average out, but this will give you guys a good mix of highway and city. If we can get 1.5 and do 200 miles with a trailer, that'd be pretty sweet. Which is quite good, because with the Tesla Model X, 5,000 pounds, we were sliced in half, for sure. 240 yeah. turned into 120. Yep. So this isn't as phased by that sort of weight. The 5,000 is light work for it. Even on some stretches of rural highway across the country, Electri America stations are probably spaced out about that far. You could definitely make it from one to the next. Okay, I'm liking this so far. We'll see what the final number shows. They don't lie when we're done with this test. And of course, gas and diesel, even here up in Montana, are still quite expensive. Nearly six bucks a gallon for diesel. And with our 6.0, we'd get about 12 miles to the gallon. So that means that each mile when you're towing in our old truck would cost you 50 cents. And with this, but with electric cars, uh, the cost for you is about 10 cents per kilowatt. So if we get two miles per kilowatt, then that would be just five cents per mile Beautiful. at this rate, at this rate. Of course, it could go up to about seven cents, but seven cents versus 50 cents. You can't beat it, EVs are the future. Fun fact, this is the only Chick-fil-A in all of Montana and look how slammed it is. All right, we're gonna find a place to park it. Here's our pizza spot and I'll show you the data in just a second. This is from Lake One. Of course, we're gonna drive back and get twice as much mileage under its belt. Boom. All right, there you guys have it. The numbers don't lie. 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour over a 10 mile average. And here's one of my thoughts. Before we reset the trip, over 500 miles, we were averaging two miles per kilowatt. Christian was thinking it was 1.9, close enough. It was two. So now we just got 1.8. So obviously that's a 10% effect. So what, only 10% loss for pulling a 5,000 pound trailer? This is crazy. Okay, no, not quite. Because those first 500 miles, we were city driving, highway driving at 80 miles an hour, and we usually had the AC on this first, uh, these first couple days. So if we were actually trying and hypermiling, what do you think it would be? Maybe 2.2 miles per kilowatt? 10, we could have been 10% more efficient probably. Definitely. In that range. Not crazy hypermiling, but realistic, probably about 2.2. So now we're at 1.8. So it's more like a, about a 20% power loss hit for 5,000 pounds. Yeah. It's not bad at all. 20, 25%, probably with 10,000, you're looking at like 40 to 50%. But so far the numbers are showing a 20 to 25% reduction pulling 5,000 pounds. And that is not bad at all. Because realistically, 90% of the time we tow anything, it's about that 5,000 pounds. So that's all we'll be doing. Yeah, I think that the biggest killer is speed overall. And when you're towing a trailer, you're naturally going a little bit slower anyway. So I'm really pleased. I think that EVs, electric pickup trucks, are very viable and totally legitimate, bona fide towing vehicles. And you did not hit the brakes once, thanks to Regen. That Gotta love beautiful. it. All right, let's see how we do on the way back. Back on the road, Mackenzie River Pizza. Nine out of 10, very good. Now we're headed back and I can't tell if we're going slightly uphill. Now it looks like we're going downhill, but we'll see. It's a fair test because we are ending where we started. So even if we were going downhill, we'll be going uphill on this leg. So it'll be a fair number when we stop in about 10 miles. 
Still doing okay, 1.7. Okay, can we still accelerate well with 5,000 pounds on the back? Give it a little, little, little gas. Oh yeah. I'm being very gentle with that load back there. Nowhere near, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. That was what, quarter throttle, you just rolled into it? That was as gently as I could push down the throttle. Yeah, we, we only put a couple straps on Subaru, so we're not trying to have it like fly off, that's why we didn't punch it, but that, that still feels like a very nice acceleration. You gotta love electric, no transmission, that just clean torque pulls you right along. And also, we mentioned it earlier, but just how quiet and peaceful and pleasant this truck is to haul with. It's been such a treat, especially compared to our old truck. Night and day difference. Okay, we're about to look at the data. We're pulling up. All right, we're gonna try throwing it in neutral and doing something with this trailer brake. Override, maybe? Neutral, trailer brake, gain. Mm. Press okay to close. Oh, I think oh. the trailer brake setting was to like nothing. All right. Yeah, that stopped us. Okay. Okay, cool. so manual sort of trailer brake controller, and then I'm sure it's uh, automatic also. But it's so cool, you don't need to buy a $200 trailer brake like our 60. Yeah, and then also, you never need to touch the brake in the first place, that's why we never felt it, we never saw the trailer brake setting come up, because we were never pushing on the brake pedal. As right, as yeah, you hardly need it, but as an emergency, if you ever need a little more bite out of them, bam, you just squeeze that, I mean, cool, we made it back, uh, what's the number? Bam! 1.8, even after our hard acceleration. How many miles? So 23.3 miles, and we went on average 1.8 miles per kilowatt. Why does this show 1.9 miles per kilowatt, but that shows 1.8? 23.3, 23.3, same timer. Weird. What the heck, guys? I'll go with that one. This trip says 1.9, this says 1.8, it's got the same data, that's, that's pretty weird. <laughs> One more quick feature that I have to compliment on this Lightning. We were just unstrapping the Outback and these lights on the tailgate and the lights illuminating the bed, wow. They put out a lot of light and right where you need them, right at the right time, that's really nice. Nice. All right, welcome to whatever day this is. We've had a busy day already driving from Kalispell to Libby, Montana to visit with our friends Meadowlark Log Homes. Check out their operation there. They even came out to our lot to check out our lot and then we headed over to Sandpoint, Idaho to check out our model dream home of a hangar home. We'll show you some pictures of that and now we are in downtown Sandpoint where we are kind of striking out on chargers. Good thing we started the day with 100% at Flathead Lake because now we're at about 25% and we're gonna need all of that to get to the next charger because the public charger in downtown Sandpoint, not working. The Tesla destination charger, not working. But luckily right next to that is this RV park, plug in for the 15 minutes that we needed to make it the rest of the way, not to Coeur d'Alene, but to Spokane, Washington. Okay, if you guys can see that, we got 69 miles of range and we have 60 miles to go. So it's gonna be close, meaning we're going no AC for a while and we are not going at 80 miles an hour, maybe uh, 70 or so. Just like that, an hour and a half later, we made it to Spokane, Washington, and our first level three DC fast charger of the entire trip. Boy, does it feel good to hopefully have a whole charge in, I don't know, less than an hour compared to the overnight stints that we've been doing previously on this trip. So this is gonna be refreshing for once. You plug it in, you're fully charged. We go to lunch, dinner, whatever, we're done. And if you're wondering how many miles remain, 24 miles. It was expecting nine miles, so we are 15 more miles uh, efficient than planned. That's because we were light on the gas and the speeds. We were traveling at about 55 to 65, so 
nowhere near the 80 miles an hour which really chews up the battery so we're actually getting 2.5 miles per kilowatt which is uh extremely good so very efficient hyper miling all right we're plugged in let's see how fast we can charge this let's actually see the flow rates unlike the screen inside which doesn't even tell you let's see what we're pushing in okay so up to the 350 kilowatts it can deliver it never does by the way it's getting 160 kilowatts uh per hour which is uh Pretty good, so this will be charged up in no time. Well guys, a new day, a new charging stop. Welcome to Missoula, Montana. Look at this sunset real quick. Oh, that's, <laughs> let me go the other way. Look at this sunset real quick. Absolutely gorgeous, and it's 9.30 p.m. and it's still this bright outside, crazy. Montana stays lit for so long. Here we are, uh, one of the last charging stops. It feels nice to be on Electrify America's network for the last like three stops. It's made charging a breeze, so there haven't been many updates for you because we haven't run into any problems, luckily. Well, I mean, there's always small problems, like those two chargers wouldn't work for some reason, so what do you know, I had to come over here. But even cooler, I wanted to update the blog because right here, parked across these two spots, was a University of Montana Missoula bus. I kid you not, it was built by Proterra and uh, they said they come here about once a week to charge it up. Uh, they say it costs about $25 to charge versus $350 for the other buses that they have in the fleet that run on diesel, 70 gallon diesel tank. So they absolutely love them. They say they hold up great and they have three of them in the fleet thanks to a grant that was issued by the state of Montana. So that's really cool. My first ever EV bus that I've seen out in the wild. I can't wait to see more buses, trash trucks, fire trucks, adopt EV technology. Of course, there's already some of that out there, but over the next few years, it's really gonna start to be more prevalent I think so that'll be really exciting to see because those things are absolute gas hogs maintenance hogs and especially the ones that have just short little trips around campus or around a small city and don't really go that far every day the heck electric technology makes a whole lot of sense okay enough of this craziness let me just unplug let's go get some dinner and head off to Bozeman or Butte where there are more high-speed chargers so it'll be pretty uneventful getting back to Bozeman and then that's it our crazy huge Montana road trip Wow full of ups and downs and lefts and rights, but uh, overall, wow, we'll give our take on the lightning when we finish it, but awesome, awesome experience. There's no telling you're the right girl, so I can only say that it feels right, it feels right, it feels right, yeah, I can only say that it feels right, it feels right, it feels right, yeah, I can only say that it feels right.